Good evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Come in. I want you to see the changes we've made around here. Very, very smart. Now, this new morbid motif was designed by those southern decorators. Oh, Topsy and Eva. <laughs> this three-part section of sofa was made especially for the wife of Harry the Hatchet Man. You see, Harry left his wife in pieces, so naturally we let the Chip and Dales fall where they may. <laughs> Now, here's our new dropped living room. Just freshly dug. It's for rent, a real bargain. All you have to do is slab on a down payment. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Death Wears a Lonely Smile was written by Ed Adamson and Bob Sloan and stars Mr. Sloan in the role of Walter with Mercedes McCambridge as Carol. Well, now let's get to tonight's torturous tale. Find your places and make yourselves comfortable before we begin. As Harry the Hatchet Man says, we're not seating anyone before the first act's curtain falls. It's dusk. And a cold wind whips through the burial ground, stirring the leafless branches into wordless whispers of dead, forgotten voices. Amid the gravestones, the big man with a bloodied gash in his forehead stands, hatless, his massive, ape-like arms hanging limply at his side, his eyes set in a lost, vacant stare. The big man remains there, transfixed, as the young woman in black comes out of the shadows behind him. Can I help you? Where, where, where did you come from? Well, I was over there putting flowers on my father's grave, and I saw you. You were standing here, and you seemed lost, so I... Lola. What? I, I've been waiting for you, Lola. Oh, I'm not... I knew you'd come if I waited, Lola. I knew you would. But my name isn't Lola. I waited so long. I waited every day. I told you I'm not Lola. You've mistaken me. My name is Carol. Carol? That's right. Carol Finley. But Lola said she'd come. She promised me. I need her. Who is Lola? Lola's my friend. She never made fun of me because I'm... I'm so big. Lola never laughed like all the others. Like all those other ones who were so mean. What's your name? I told you, it's Carol. What's yours? Walter. Walter, you'd better let me take you home. Home? Yes. Where do you live? Why, uh, I don't know. There's something the matter with you. Yes, you're hurt. That cut on your forehead. Cut? Yes. Look, I'll take you to my place. My mother has a rooming house, and you can stay there until you feel better. No, I, I can't go. I... I must wait for Lola. I, I promised I'd wait Walter. for her. Walter. Yeah? Was her name Lola Douglas? Yeah. Yeah, Lola Douglas. There's no use in your waiting. Oh, you mustn't talk like that. She'll be here. She will. She's already here. That gravestone there, look at it. Lola Douglas. Dying. March 6, 1948. <laughs> There you are, Walter. Now, that bandage will do for a while. Uh, you're nice to me, Carol. You're like Lola. You're not afraid of me, are you? Of course not. Why should I be afraid? Because I'm so big. I, I remember when I was in school, a, a boy made fun of me. I, I grabbed his arm and I, I told him to stop. He just laughed at me. I didn't mean to hurt him, but I, I broke his arm. I, I just squeezed a little and... And it broke. Then they were all afraid of me. They shouldn't have laughed at you. I like you. But I can't stay here. Oh, it's perfectly all right. I spoke to my mother. And she said that you can have my room for a few days. And I'll move downstairs. Oh, I have to find Lola. I, I promised Walter, her. Walter, I... try to understand. Lola is dead. 
Oh, no. She was buried over a year ago. Oh, that isn't true. I, I, I saw Lola last week. I, I spoke to her. All right, Wally. All right. And tomorrow you can start looking for her again. But now you must get some rest. You just lie down here and I'll... Carol, why are you looking at me like that? This was on the table among the things you took out of your pocket. What is it? A newspaper clipping. I didn't have a clipping in my pocket. It's dated March 7, 1948. Woman found brutally crushed to death. Victim identified as Lola Douglas. Well, Carol, I just stopped by for a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought Carol Finley was here. Uh, Carol gave me her... Lola. Lola? I knew you weren't dead. Oh, my name isn't Lola. I knew they were lying all the time, Lola. No, I'm glad it's hard. I live down the hall. You they must were be... trying to keep me from you. Come in, Lola. No, no, let go of my hand. Come with me, Lola. Oh, please, let go. Oh, my hand, you're hurting oh, me. I, I wouldn't hurt you, Lola. You, you, you know I wouldn't. Let go. Oh, you mustn't talk so loud, Lola. They'll, they'll hear you. They'll, they'll, they'll think I'm hurting oh, you. Oh, please. Please let me out of oh, here. Don't, don't try to get away from me, Lola. I, I might hurt you. I, I don't want to hurt you, Lola, but you m might make me. Stop. You see, I, I'm, I'm hurting you. You're, you're making me, and I don't, I don't want to. Oh, let go. Let go. What do you want? Well, I was downstairs, and I heard someone scream. Who are you? Carol's mother, Mrs. Finley. The scream came from this room. I'm sure of it. Oh, uh, no, Mrs. Finley. Nobody... There she you. is. On the floor in there. Huh? Get out of my way. Gladys. Gladys. What have you done to her? Well, she uh. wasn't here before. Lola was here, but now she's gone. Oh. Gladys. Gladys, are you all right? Huh? Oh, Mrs. Finley. Who, who is she? Oh. Keep him away from me. Keep him away. Now, you're all right, my dear. I, I'm here. He tried to kill me. No, no, I, I wouldn't hurt anybody. Here's your pocketbook, Gladys. He, he probably wanted your money. I don't want money. <laughs> There's money in it. How much did you have, Gladys? Well, I just cashed a check. $68. It was your rent. Twenty, forty, sixty, five, eight. Sixty-eight. Well, it's all here. Well, come on now, dear, and I'll take you to your room. All right. A and you, I want you to clear out of here. No, I, I can't go. Y you're getting out, you understand? You're getting out. I can't go. Lola's coming back. I promised her I'd wait, and I'm staying here until she comes. <laughs> What is it, Mom? What's the matter? I, I can't find Gladys. Her bed wasn't slept in. Did you see her? No. Well, I went to her room and she wasn't there. I had a feeling when you brought him home the other night, I had a feeling I should have turned him away. He's killed Gladys. Oh, Mom, stop it. Stop talking like that. Well, he tried it yesterday. No, he didn't, Mom. He's just mixed up. You've got to try to understand him. Oh, please take it easy. Gladys probably left for work early. No, sir. She didn't leave this house alive. I was in her room. He's done something to her. He's hidden her body. Mommy, I don't believe he'd do a thing like that. Then what about Lola Douglas? She was murdered a year ago. You told me about that yourself. All right, I did. But there's no proof that Walter killed her. Mom, I understand him. I'll go up and talk to him. No, you won't. You're staying right here. I'll do the talking to him. I've got to get him out of this house before we're all murdered. <laughs> You've got to get out of here. Oh, please, Mrs. Finley, don't make me go. Lola will come back. Lola Douglas was murdered a year ago. That's not true. Lola's alive. I, I saw her last week. She was murdered by you. No, I, I wouldn't hurt Lola. Well, you killed her the same way you killed Gladys. Oh, you shouldn't say things like that, Mrs. Finley. You took Gladys out of here last night and murdered her. No, Mrs. Finley, I, I didn't leave. I... I was waiting for Lola. You're a monster, a horrible, crazy monster. You're saying mean things to me, Mrs. Finley. Well, I want you out of my house. I want you out right now. You're not like Carol. Carol's nice. 
Carol said I could stay here in her room. Yes, but not if you don't pay. Pay? Oh, I know you have no money. You can't stay here another moment unless you pay. And I want a month's rent in advance. <laughs> now, what do you say to that? All right, Mrs. Finley. And the quicker you get Here's out of here... Here's your the... money. Well, where did Is you... Is this get... enough for a month in advance, Mrs. Finley? Is $68 enough? $68, Carol. Here, look. He gave me $68. I don't understand it, Mom. Yesterday, he didn't have a penny in his pocket. But don't you see what this proves? It's just as I told you. He's murdered Gladys. That's exactly what she had in her pocketbook last night. $68. <laughs> Sergeant Pierce, 12th Precinct. Sergeant, this is Mrs. Finley, 529 Elm Street. You'd better come over right away. Finley, 529 Elm. What's mm. the trouble, lady? Well, oh, one of my rumors, Gladys Hart, she's missing. Missing? Well, we don't handle that, lady. Oh, but listen, I'll I... switch you over to missing person. Wait, just a minute, please. Yeah? Well, this woman, she's not just missing. She's been murdered. Now, look, lady, which is it? She missing or murdered? The both. She hasn't been in her room all night. She had $68 in her pocketbook and... Oh. Hello? Hello? You! Good afternoon, Hello. Mrs. Finley. Hey, what, what's going on there? Hello? I... I'm sorry I troubled you, officer. I... I made a mistake. That is hard to lie. She... She just walked in. <laughs> Who's there? It's Carol, Walter. Oh, come in, Carol. Did I disturb you? Oh, I, I was listening to the music on the radio. It's, it's nice music, isn't it, Carol? Yes, Walter, very pleasant. Lola likes music just like that, too. Walter? Yeah? I came up to apologize for the way Mom acted to you. Mrs. Finley said mean things to me. Well, Mom didn't understand. Mrs. Finley said I killed that girl. I didn't kill her. Yes, we know that now. Gladys came in a little while ago. She stayed at a friend's house overnight. Walter, where did you get the money you gave Mom? Well, it was in my pocket. I found the $68 in my pocket. But it was more than $68. More? Yes, Mom was so excited when you gave it to her, she forgot to count it. But you gave her $85. Oh, I only had $68. You must have made a mistake. You had $85. You gave Mom $17 too much. So here she told me to give you back the $17. Oh, you keep it, Carol. You're nice to me. <laughs> no, Walter, it's yours. Please take it. Carol. Yes? This money, I, uh... Well... Would you let me take you to dinner? Well, you see, I do. No, you wouldn't be ashamed to go with me because I'm so big. Because people would look at me and laugh. Of course I wouldn't be ashamed. Then you'll go? Yes, Walter, I'd be very glad to go with you. I'll just run downstairs and get my things. You meet me out in front of the house in ten minutes. All right, Carol, I'll meet you. We'll have a nice time. Yes, Walter, I'm sure we will. on the murder this afternoon in Washington Park. An empty purse seems to be the clue to the brutal crime. The murdered woman had $85 in bills when she left the house last night. According to the police, the murder was undoubtedly committed by a large man with great power in his hands. Local and state authorities are conducting an extensive search. Hey, stop playing the music. The music was so nice. And they stopped playing it. <laughs> Oh, I've been looking all over the house for you. you. You're all right? Of course I'm all right. Why, why are you putting on your coat? I'm going out to dinner. Out to dinner? Yes, with Walter. Him? Oh, thank heavens I got here in time. Mom, what are you talking about? He's a murderer. Oh, you're not going to start that all over again, are well, you? Well, it just came over the radio. A woman was killed last night in Washington Park. But that doesn't prove that Walter is a murderer. It does. 
the radio said the woman had $85 in her pocketbook. She had what? $85. Why, that's what he gave me this afternoon, $85. That's what he killed that woman for. Oh, Mom, I can't believe it. Oh, that's how he suddenly had the money to pay the rent. And the radio said the woman was crushed to death by a man who was big and powerful. Big and powerful. It's him. Oh, and you would have been the next, Carol. Where, where is he now? I was supposed to meet him outside the house. I suppose he's out there waiting for me now. Oh, that man's a lunatic, a crazy killing lunatic. Mom, what are we going to do? Well, you stay here in this room now and don't leave it. What about you? Well, I'm going downstairs to call the police. I'll be back in a few minutes. And remember, no matter what happens, don't leave this room. <laughs> Operator, uh, the police. Quick, get me the police. One moment, please. Hello, Mrs. <gasps> oh! You're calling the police. No, you're no, gonna I... You're going to tell on me. No, you're wrong. I wasn't going to... <laughs> Mom, what took you so long? I was... Hello, Carol. Hello, Walter. I was waiting for you, Carol. Well, I... I'm not ready yet. You got your hat and coat on. Well, can't we wait just a little long? You're afraid. You're afraid to go to dinner with me. No. Otherwise, you'd go with me right now. Well, I... All right, Walter, all right. I'll do just as you like. We'll go right now. Why did you change? Me change? I don't know what you mean. I don't think you like me anymore. Oh, but I do like you, Walt. You want to get away from me, I can tell. You don't want to be with me. But I came out with you. I'm going to dinner with you. But you don't want to. I can tell by the way you act. You keep pulling away from me. Wait, wait. What, what is it? Did you really want me to like you, Walt? Yeah, very much. Then I tell you what... This florist shop here. You go in there. You buy me some flowers. Some flowers? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Well, what kind? Oh, any kind. And, and I'll wait here while you do it. No, you no, you, you come with me. You, you, you pick them up. Oh, but I want you to surprise me. Oh, I, I, I don't want you to be alone. You, you might run away from no, me. No, I wouldn't do a thing like oh, that. Oh, if you want some flowers, you've you, you got to come in the shop with me. All right, Walter. I'll go with you. I do for you? Uh, what kind of flowers do you want, Carol? Roses. Oh, yes, roses. Roses are very nice. A dozen? Yes. Well, I'll have them for you. Oh, uh, Miss. Yes? Miss, I I have to make a phone call. I wonder if I could Well, just... there's a pay booth over there behind the fern. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll just be a minute, Walter. But, Carol, You wait I... here for the flowers. I'll be right back. Operator, get me the police. One moment, please. Sergeant Pierce, 12th Precinct. Well, listen to me carefully. I don't have much time. My name is Carol Finley, and the man who murdered that woman in Washington Park last night is with me. Where are you? In Kramer's Florist Shop on 6th Street, but we're leaving here in a minute. He's taking me to dinner at the Black Grotto down the block. Black Grotto, I got you. Please, hurry. Don't worry, we'll get there in no time. Oh, you have the flowers, Walter. Oh, they're very pretty. Who did you call, Carol? Why, I called Mom. You talked to Mrs. Finley? Yes, I just wanted to let her know where I'd be so that she wouldn't worry. You talked to her? Yes, I just told her that I did. Come on, Walter, I'm hungry. All right, Carol. Wait, Carol, I'll call a taxi. But we're just going to the Black Grotto. We don't need a taxi. It's just down the street there. I changed my mind, Carol. We're not going to the Black Grotto. I'm taking you to a nicer place. Much nicer. <laughs>
Walter. Why did you take me out here? Oh, there's something in this cemetery I want to show you. Walter, please, let's go back to town. We won't be long. It's right here. This is what I wanted to show you. It is... It's an empty grave. Yes, Carol. And we have the flowers to put on it. But no one's in there. It's empty. You'll be there, Carol. Walter? It's for you. Oh, you don't want to hurt me, Walter. I'm your friend, remember? No, no, you're bad. You're like all the rest of them. I thought you were nice, but you're not. Don't you remember? I tried to help you. You didn't call Mrs. Finley from the flower shop? Yes, I did, Walter. I spoke to Mom. That's not the truth. You couldn't talk to her. Mrs. Finley is dead. She's what? I killed her. She was going to tell the police about me. I, I put my hands around her neck and I squeezed and... She was dead. Uh, I, I... I put her in the cellar. Hmm? Now I've got to kill you. No, Walter, wait, wait. If you do anything to me, there won't be anybody left to help you find Lola. Lola? Yes. Lola? Lee, yes, Walter, I can help you find Lola. I think I know where she's hiding. Lola's dead. No. She left. She laughed at me. She said I was crazy, a big crazy fool. That's what she said. I... I thought she was my friend, but she wasn't. She was mean. She laughed at me. She was mean like all the rest. They all laughed oh, at I me. I wouldn't laugh at you, Walter. I wouldn't. I hate it when people laugh at me. I want to hurt them just like I want to hurt you because you're laughing at me now. I'm not laughing. I'm not. You are. No, please don't. Let's go, stop please. Stop laughing. Stop please, laughing Walter, at don't. me. If you stop laughing, no. I wouldn't have to hurt you. Oh. But you won't stop. You, you, you keep on you. Oh. Lola. Lola, make them stop. Lola. Lola, please make them stop. They're hurting me. You all right, miss? Yes, officer. I'm all right. That was a close call you had. You didn't turn up at the Black Grotto. I checked with the florist. She saw him take you into a cab outside her shop. Lucky thing I got out here in time. Yes. He sure was a big guy, wasn't he? Yes, he was. A big guy who didn't want people to laugh at him. Well, that closes the lid on tonight's little coffin of curious characters. And Walter certainly proved a point. The bigger they are, the harder they fall into a grave. Say, Carol certainly had a narrow escape, didn't she? The poor girl almost died laughing. You know, that's the trouble with most people. No sense of humor. Some of them just can't take a choke. <laughs> All right, so my gags leave you morbid. You didn't want to sleep tonight anyway. Or did you? <laughs> Good night, pleasant dreams. Inner Sanctum was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for service men and women overseas. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>